hello to Victory Monday. And let's talk. Chicago Bears. Yeah, people want to talk about the Bears today, right? Was that a surprise game or what? You know, for all the people out there, like Mike Martz, that idiot, that coach we had an offensive coordinator years ago, and a few other guys said out there, ex so-called experts, said the Bears weren't going to win any games, okay? They won the first game of the season. Of course, it's a long season, and maybe we won't win anymore, but we won the first one, so F them. So let's, get, let's talk a little bit about the game. It was quite a game. I mean, Bears won 19 to 10, and um, man, I was surprised. I, the first half wasn't so great, but we're going to talk about the game. But what a game to have, what a game to win in the pouring rain. I mean, that field looked like a lake at the end of the game. And when they were diving in the end zone, that was great. What a great picture of Justin Fields, you know. So really, really I got to give them a lot of credit because that was not an easy game to win um, for a lot of reasons. And uh, we're going to talk about that. So let's get into it. So if you watch me, I've been on three seasons now, if you're a regular, and if you're not, welcome. You'll learn to get, you'll, you'll figure out pretty early what my, what my things that make me happy and things that make me mad are with the Bears. Um, so let's get started. So I have top three, I have three things that I always say and have had said, you all remember, that if you can do um, these top threes, at least two out of the three top threes, you have a chance to win if not win the game. So let's talk about that. So one of our top threes, I know you're all saying it, penalties, the turnover battle, and time of possession. In yesterday's games, the Bears won two out of three. And this is huge because they only had three penalties for 24 yards. Last year, I don't think we ever had a game where we had three penalties. And my rule is let five penalties or less, you have a chance to win the game. San Francisco, on the other hand, shot themselves in the foot, if you recall. They, were, they, they really did. I mean, had it been a cleaner game, could the score have been different? Probably, but San Francisco had 12 penalties for 99 yards, and you can't do that. And that just proves my rule. Um, you're not going to win. Well, you can, but you're not really going to win with that many penalties. Okay, so they won that one. The second one, turnover battle. They won that one. They had two turnovers to San Francisco's one. And number 33, our cornerback, or our cornerback, JJ, I call him JJ. It's Jalen Johnson, but get used to that. I have nicknames, JJ. And a rookie, number nine, who is a defensive back as well. And it's Basker. Um, and number nine, he's a rookie. He got um, these both did. So what happened was JJ, um, he got um, he knocked the ball out. He did a peanut Tillman knockout punch out in the first quarter, and Baskin number nine, Basker number nine got the ball, and uh, he picked up the fumble. And then in third or fourth, I think it was the fourth quarter, Eddie Jackson number four, our safety. Um, he got an interception, and so that was great. So we won the turnover battle two to one. Um, what we did not win was the third thing. So you know I do penalties, turnovers, and time of possession. And the Bears just lost that by, oh, I don't know, seven uh, minutes. Uh, the Bears had 26.33 uh, um, so 27, let's say, 27 um, uh, minutes of possession to San Francisco's 33. So it was close, you know, but the Bears did not win it. But they won two out of three of my things that I always talk about. If you win them, you have a chance. If not, you're going to win the game. So they did two out of three. Right on. Um, the, our, our numbers are not over the top impressive. But that doesn't really mean at the end of the day much. If you get that W, a W is a W is a W. That's all I'm saying. So the total yards the Bears had were 204, 
not great, but the, they had 99 yards of rushing and 105 passing. Now, San Francisco had a lot more because they were slinging it around, and they beat us in the rush, which really kind of made me sad. But um, if the Bears' defense is bend, don't break, I'm fine with that. But um, they had uh, uh, 331 total yards. They had 176 rushing. We don't want to see that. You got to get that down. The the defense has got to get that down. Um, and passing 155. So they beat us in that category. But at the end of the day, we beat them 19 to 10. So the Bears did that bend and don't break. Um, and I like it. I like it a lot. Um, two rookies really stood out in this game for me. Um, and they were both on defense. Number 91, a defensive end, Robinson, uh, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. And number nine, defensive back, Basker, which I talk about. Both rookies, and they both shined in that game. And in that pouring rain, if you could play that, maybe you could play, but you're going to get better and better. So, you know, that's the thing. We have to, I'm sweating, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's a little hot here. Um, so anyways, because remember, I'm in Vegas, baby. So those two really stood out, and we're going to talk about them again a little bit later. Um, surprisingly enough, though, no, um, who I love, the backup running back, number 24, Herbert, he actually had more um, rushing, our, rushing yards than David Montgomery. So uh, Herbert uh, ran a lot more in the second half. Montgomery had more attempts, but Herbert had less attempts with more yards. He had 45 yards rushing, and David, number 33, our starting runner back, had 26 yards. I don't care. And then with Fields, it came to 99. I don't care who does it. Let's just get it done. Let's run. And I really like that Coach Matt stayed with the run especially in the fourth quarter, because you stay with the run. As a matter of fact, my son was um, frustrated in the third and uh, in the second and third quarter when we were running and not get, we were getting like three yards, maybe four. And he's like, oh my God. I said, be patient. There's a reason for this. And it, the reason is if you can keep at least getting positive yards, two or you should have three or more. You're going to wear down the, their defense, the opposing defense in the fourth quarter, and you're eating up the clock. Something that Nagy never understood. Nagy last year and the year before and the year before would always abandon the run in the second half, and then he'd be having them throwing all over the place. You'd have three and outs, you'd have turnovers. You're not eating up the clock, and that gives the other offense, the your opponent, the offense, time to score. And it wears out your defense because you're doing three and outs. So I really liked that Coach Matt stuck with his game plan. Really, really like it. And I really like how... They made the adjustments, something else Nagy did not do. He would not go into halftime and make adjustments. He'd come out and look the same, except for he'd stop running. So they made major adjustments, clearly, because that's when we scored all our runs, um, our uh, points. So that is a really good thing. I was really excited to see that he made adjustments, and he talks about that in his uh, press conference, and they came out. Um, and it took him a little bit to gel to, but Coach Matt, I'm already loving you. Um, now, I know everyone's like, oh, my God, Santos, he missed number two, our kicker, missed two extra points. But I believe that had totally do with the weather. That field was a mess. Of course, Robbie Gold had no problem, but he's, again, Robbie Gold. We should never have gotten rid of him, right? Um and then, if you were watching, where the Bears had a chance to go and uh, get a field goal, um, and they got that penalty. So, Santos is the field goal kicker. The holder is a number 16, Gill, our punter, who is also a rookie. So, Gill brought out a towel on the field and tried drying out where um, the plant foot would end up for the kicker. So... Um, and then he threw it and left it on the field. You can't do that. Now, maybe you can do that in college, but you can't do that, young man, in the NFL because that's not fair to the other team. So we got a penalty, pushed us back, one of the three penalties we got yesterday, and we lost the field goal. But it's, it's learned. But it turns out that Santos, after the game, called 
um, and said, I, I, he was interviewed and he said, it was not Gil's fault, it was mine. I told him to do it. So he's taken all the blame. Rookie mistake, kicker mistake, we're going to live with it because they won. They'll never do that again, but I kind of like that he tried doing it, though, you know? It's like, because that field was sopping wet. Okay. So, but that's pretty cool that Santos did that. And don't worry about him. It was pouring rain, and, you, you know, you just couldn't get your plant foot good. So we won't worry about that unless that becomes a problem. Hopefully it doesn't. The Bears' uh, defense, I thought, played very well. Um, I really did. They were all over the place. Um, they were, you know, stopping, they were making stops on, you know, runs. Of course, they gave up 176 yards, but they still stopped them when they had to. And the Bear defense had two sacks. Um, the rookie, number 91, the defensive end, um, Robinson, he had 1.5. So he shared a sack. His second sack was with number 58, Roquan Smith, our linebacker. He had a half a sack. So the, between the two of them, they had two sacks. And Fields was sacked twice by the uh, San Francisco defense, which is pretty remarkable considering how bad our line is and how good the defense of San Francisco is. We're going to talk about that. But as far as our offensive line, I, I'm going to give them a grade of C and a half. Or C and a half. <laughs> Pickled, remember that, um, a C minus. And I could have given them a D, but because of the weather, I'm going to give them a C minus because it could have been a lot worse, and those that score could have been way high, and it wasn't. So I'm going to give them a C minus because they played really, really well. Um, the off I mean, I'm talking about the offensive line. Because of the weather. Now, they played well, the offensive line, in moments, but they weren't consistent. And they weren't giving our running backs much of an open space. Those running backs earned every yard themselves. So Herbert and uh, Montgomery or earned every yard they got on their own because the D, uh, the offensive line did not open up holes. And um, But on the other hand, they only allowed two sacks. And, you know, last year... Uh, Fields was the most sacked quarterback in the league. So two, I'm going to go with. Um, and remember, they played a very good defense. Now, if they don't get this O-line shored up and, and playing better, it's going to be a long season for our running backs and our quarterbacks. It's just going to be. Um, now, the defense played very well. I thought they were all over the place. They made some mistakes. Some of the backfield guys made some mistakes on some passes. But, again, it's a very young team. And there's hardly anybody left from last year out there. In the backfield, you have J.J., uh, Jalen Johnson, and Eddie Jackson. And um, there's a few other guys that come in and out, but not starters. So I thought they played very well. They had the turnovers. And they had the sack. So they're moving in the right direction each day. And remember, they are young. They will, and, they own, and they only let them score 10 points. I know they gave up a lot of yards, but who cares? At the end of the day, if you got the W, you're golden, man. Of course, we did have a break. Their tight end, George Kittle, did not play. And he's really, really good, you know. So he didn't play. So they kind of gave us a break. But, you know, we'll take them. Every team takes them. So, of course, the first half, I talked about this before, how we didn't do anything, and um, that's when they scored. No, they scored seven points and then three points, I believe, in the third quarter, and that was it. So, uh, very impressed by, uh, with the bad weather and all, um, how well they did. And remember, as far as our offense, and I will give the offensive line credit on this too, we were playing on paper now. It was the first game of the season, but on paper, the so-called experts, of course, who said we wouldn't win any games, said that um, San Francisco's defense is rated number one. They were, they're good. They were really, really good. And um, that's why we didn't get a lot of running yards, too. So you, we got to give the offensive line credit where it's due. Maybe I should have given them a C-plus, but nothing better than that. So uh, shout out to them. Good job. 
I'm not sure if you heard about this, but the team gave, you know how game balls get handed out by the coach to the best player or players on the team? It's usually one, sometimes two. The players gave the game balls to Coach Matt and the GM, uh, Ryan Poles, which I really liked because that shows the team is really together and they really respect the coach. Really, and that's what we've lacked in years because I don't feel that Nagy had the respect of the players. And I don't think the Bears in the last three years were playing as a team. Yesterday you saw a team playing as a team. And and considering the monsoon that was going on and everybody said we weren't going to win any games, it was kind of impressive. Um, You know, we've got a long way to go, people. It is going to be an up and down season. I'm pretty sure of that because of the youth and the problems we have on the offensive line. Um, and we, the other thing is the Bears desperately need is these receivers to step up. We don't, except for Mr. Mooney, number 11. Um, and if you wonder why I call him Mr. Mooney, if you're old like me and you used to watch the Lucy shows in the uh, 70s, she had a boss Gail Gordon, and he was on all her shows, and he actually appeared once on I Love Lucy, but he was on all her shows in the 70s, and she used to call him Mr. Mooney. So that's why I call um, the receiver Mooney, Mr. Mooney number 11, who I have on today. So, but the receivers, that's a problem too. So O-line and receivers on the offensive line are a problem. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, of course, next year in the draft, we're going to have a number one pick. Um, But I really hope that they go out and get a big, tall, lanky receiver who can go catch balls over the defensive guys. That's what you see really good teams have, and that's what the Bears need. So it is going to be an up-and-down season um, because there's going to be mistakes. But as long as they get better every week and we see the improvements – I think everybody's going to be happy. I mean, nobody expects them to go to the Super Bowl this year. But if we came out with a 500 season or better, <coughs> excuse me, I think everybody would be like, cool, right? So let's hope um, each week gets better, and let's hope we don't have any more monsoons. because. And I am grateful in that weather that nobody was hurt. There was around the league yesterday some big players that went out with, um, like, uh, uh, T.J. Watt for Pittsburgh, it looks like he may be out the rest of the year, which really sucks. And even um, the Dallas quarterback, he'll be out multiple games because he broke his thumb. Um, it was crazy yesterday. There was I saw more missed field goals in the games I was watching than I've ever seen, and there was two overtime games and one tie in those overtime games. So it was a crazy first week. It really, really was. That's what you see. The first couple games are tough because a lot of these players don't play in preseason, which shows, in my opinion, the Bears played most of their players in preseason because they had to. But it shows. So the first two games are kind of sloppy because the veterans didn't play, which means they should play in preseason. That's just my thought. I get why they don't, but it doesn't help them in the first couple games. So maybe the Bears can take advantage of that next week, which uh, we're going to talk about in a minute. Okay, so all in all, great game, right? Um, anyways, um, all in all, I thought it was a great game and, um, we won and there's a lot of positives. Um, but so let's talk about the turf award. Now, if you just, you're new and you haven't been watching since the beginning of this season, I know I didn't do this the last two years. This is artificial turf from the um, Bears field in 1997. They ripped it up finally because you can see there's no real cushion there. This is what they were playing on. Yeah, and it's hard. Can you hear that? And um, so they ripped it up and put real turf in for 1998 season. So you could buy the um, squares. And these two squares I have, Bears players actually played on because they told us they came from the middle of the field. So... Cool, huh? So that's my award this year because, you know, Walter Payton ran on this. The 85 Bears played on this. So this is from, that's why it's a turf award. It's the tough award. And I'm going to give it, some people might not agree because I went back and forth. Should Justin Fields get it? Or I'm picking the team, the 
a defensive, the whole defensive team. Um, were their stats great? No. But when it really counted, they stopped them. They held them to 10 points. And these guys were in the playoffs last year to go to the Super Bowl. Of course, they have a different quarterback this year. But um, so I'm giving it to them because they played tough. And it was not an easy game to be playing in that pouring rain. Your footing gets tough. So, um, like I said, I could have given it to Justin Fields because he did throw those uh, um passes for touchdowns but all in all the Bears defense gave the Bears offense the opportunity to get back on the field and score points so that's why this week's the first original uh, first official turf award of the 2022 season goes to the Chicago Bears defense congratulations guys great job well done and so that's it we love the game and um I don't know. I'm just happy. I'm always happy when they win, but I'm cautiously optimistic. So let's just see. Now, next week, we know that we're going to have a tough game. Not only are we playing the Packers in Lambeau on Sunday night, which we don't have very much luck with the Packers or playing night games, we're, we're going to be playing a pissed-off Packer team because they got embarrassed yesterday. And you know what? That was the best thing about yesterday. It's always a good day when the Bears win and the Packers lose. Yes! Makes this Packer, uh, this Packer, ah, this Bears fan a happy, happy lady. I mean, that's a win-win, right? But they're going to be pissed because they played, I guess, very poorly. So they're going to come out mad. They're going to be home. So it's going to be a tough game. Um, we'll have to see. We'll talk about the Bears versus the Packers on my next show on Friday. So don't miss that show. Remember, I do two a week, depending on when, if the Bears play Sunday or Monday. I always do it the following game and talk about the game previous night. And then I always go on a Friday before the weekend game. So remember to check me out. Um, tell all your friends. Um, hopefully it's, a, it's an easy show to watch. You know, I don't go overboard and stuff, but... This year, I don't have to bitch about Nagy because if you watched my show last year, in the last couple of years, that's all I did, pretty much. But it was warranted. Um, so, again, next week, I'll talk Friday about the Packers. Let's not in think about them right now. Let's just enjoy this victory. Victory Monday, right on. And, again, uh, I'm very proud of the Bears. I'm loving what I'm seeing. So, let's see, you know. I mean, and yesterday – was um, the first time I got to watch a game with my grandson. I know, I'm a little crazy. I know. Um, he's only five months old, but it's third three generations, me, my son, and my grandson. And it was great. And there's many more to come. People are like, well, when he gets older, he's going to have a – he's Mike is make his own choice on what team. I'm like, yeah, no. He can have two favorite teams, but the number one is the Bears. That's just how it goes in this family. I'm telling you, okay? So uh, – it was pretty cool. I enjoyed it. I know. I'm a, I'm a sentimental lady. You know, I really am. Under this rough, you know, personality that I have and stuff. But I'm really sentimental at heart. <laughs> Plus, remember, I'm stuck with my dad's face on a woman's body. Just not fair. So, all right. Hopefully I made your day and I light and I made you laugh a little bit today and we talked about it and we're all enjoying the victory. So uh, we'll see what happens during the week. We will talk meet again Friday. We'll go over the game on Sunday night. And I just want you all out there, my fans, I don't like to call you my fans. That sounds kind of pompous on my edge. My viewers, um, that you know, be kind to each other. Love one another. Help people out if they if they need help. Smile at people when you're walking around. There's nothing better than a smile. Because remember, a smile is better than a frown. Besides, frowns cause uh, wrinkles. And at my age, I cannot afford any more wrinkles, especially when this is my dad's face, okay? It's just not fair. <laughs> so be kind. Let's stick together. We're in this together. We can do it. Love one another. That's all I ask, really, seriously. So on that note, 
I will see you guys Friday. It was a great game. And keep on rocking and rolling from Vegas, baby. See you later.